We wanted to talk about the pros and cons of the Wallabies nines and uh, who might be picked. Nelson, you and I were talking about this after a few uh, red wines at the at the Tars. Obviously, Nick White has is is the first choice nine for the Wallabies. I think he's had quite a quiet year because he's been able to. Like, I feel like he's just kind of cruising along until finals and test footy personally. Um, but uh, do you guys want to have a crack at the pros and cons of, uh, let's say, Tate McDermott first? Hi. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I think Tate, as good as he is in test match footy, he's he's a nine you bring off the bench. You bring off for some spark. You know what I mean? He's just... I, I, is I he be the saying. nine you bring off the bench? I'm not sure he is because... I think similarly, Jake Gordon bring Jake Gordon's like a, in between a Nick White and a Tate McDermott on the end of the scale. You know, he's a, he brings spark and he can play that way, but he also can, you know, play a bit more structured footy. So for me, it's a tough one. Um, I mean, I personally think we're going with Nick White, and then I would be taking mm. probably Jake Gordon um, on your bench. Um, but I I'd um, love to see Tate though. I was saying when when we chat about this that. There's something that Carter Gordon, and not Carter Gordon, but he has it too. Um, Jay Gordon has, and that's the ability to just capitalize on any little mistake. Literally, the t- both Gordons have a very good ability to do it. They've both scored a bunch of tries this year. Just mm-hmm. capitalizing on any tiny little mistake, um, and and to be able to finish those moments off, and to be able to do that on an international stage, um, that can be you know a, a make or break moment in a in a really tight game and obviously international games are you gotta you gotta grind out those points a little bit more. So to be able to get those, you know, tries against the run of play is is massive. And I think that's something that car uh, that Jake Gordon offers better than any of the other nines. The the work that Tate McDermott does is phenomenal. But it's much harder for him to score that try, you know, pick and go through the middle. Uh, mind you, he keeps us on the front foot, and and that's a that's a real strength for him. But I just think I think what you're getting at is if you're playing Ireland or you're playing France or New Zealand, the opportunities there for a nine to dart at a defence that's a little bit lazy around the ruck probably doesn't exist. Mm. Whereas Jake Gordon's the bloke that scores because they dropped one ball, you know, and he just happens to be the man on the spot, Johnny on the spot, runs seventy yeah. meters and scores a brilliant try. And I think if you're going to look for an X factor late in the game, that's the X factor that's more likely to happen in test match footy. Yeah. yeah. Which is my, sad. my other question though, is um, well, my other worry for Tate is that it's been a few years now. He's been around the Wallabies and I don't think his kicking game has really improved. I think mm. his decision making is better. You know, I think all the nines in Australia know if you get a turnover, that little dink over the top is a favorite of all Australian fly, uh, scrum halves. But uh, other than that, I'm not Tate has a very strong kicking game. His box kick's still weak. Um, he's not bad at kind of running a bit like uh, Isaac Fines, at taking five or six steps sideways and then looking for space. But I just, again, I don't think it's the kick that is going to help you in test match footy. I think Jake Gordon's probably developed a little further in that area, but I say that knowing full well that he shanked the hell out of one on the weekend. So I think you've yeah. both got some work to do. Do you take two or three nines with you into your World Cup? Three. You do take three. I'm pretty sure Eddie in the last one only took two. Well, he did, but it was because Matt Giddo could play at, at nine and they knew that they could bring someone. And I think it depends on who your nines are as well. Yeah. My, my, my big thing here is if you have two or three, if you have three nines that can really play at this level without having to be around the team, then no problem. You know, if Will Gania wants to come back, no problem. You can rest him and pull him in late. But the problem is that I think both Tate McDermott and Jake Gordon or Ryan Lonigan as well, I think they need to be with the squad as the third choice to be competent and comfortable if they get called in. Nick White's the only bloke who you could call as an SOS after an injury and he'll just turn up and play well. So I, I don't think that we have the luxury of picking two because of the fact that our back three all need to be confident and comfortable in the squad. Well, then that, that leads us perfectly into the question of your third scrum half. Are, we, are, we, are you picking Ryan Lonigan or are you picking Tate McDermott? Ask me after this week, man, when Ryan Lonigan gets another 80 minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I, do, I just don't think we've seen enough of him. I don't know how you could possibly pick him for the Wallabies off, mm-hmm. you know, a handful of 30-minute performances. I think he's solid. I think his kicking game is solid. His work rate is solid. His pass is solid. But we haven't really ever seen him under the pressure cooker. And we're going to turn up to a Wallabies, uh, to a World Cup with a Wallabies nine 
who's barely played any top level footy in the last well in his career and he hopes that he turns good. it on. Like I, I just don't think we'll take that risk. Yeah, I'm 100 on on board with that. Look, he's a very very good player, and next year he gets his crack to to put his name up in lights for the Wallabies, and it's not this year. Um, I mean, there's, there's a small chance that he goes, I take both the Brumbies halfbacks and know that they, they're they both the, probably their safer, stable, you know, smoother pass and things like that. But no, I, I think back end of a match, he's not the one that you want. You know, if the, if the game is not going your way, there's two other blokes that can do it and they're the two guys I'm going to take. Yeah, yeah, I think if, if that happens, Noel Alessio is playing 10. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a very good point. That's look, yeah. my thoughts are the same. Look, Ryan Lonergan, I'm not sure how he got into the a sneaky look into the, the Wallaby he's squad. Good. He's we good. Just, he's good, but just haven't seen enough of it. You know, I think they talk a lot about um in, down in Canberra about his his leadership qualities um and just making really good decisions. And obviously he's got a he can kick for goal and things like that. But um I don't know. I just haven't seen any stand particularly standout performances yet. You know, I haven't seen him turn an entire game like you have Tate McDermott. So I think for the World Cup, you take Tate as your third guy, you play him against Portugal. Maybe off the bench against Georgia, and then it's Nick White, Jake Gordon against Wales and Fiji, and then on hey, to look, the I, semis and finals, of course, when we get to the finals. You. I'm on board with you. There's a, there's a lot of people that will be able to argue the, the Tate over Gordon, and, and that's fair enough for different reasons. I think it is fair enough, um, but I, I wouldn't be on board for really arguing Lonigan over the both of those two. Yeah, yeah, 